after Master of the World, audiences next saw Vincent on the big screen in the 1961 film The Pit and the Pendulum. Directed by Roger Corman and based on the Edgar Allan Poe story of the same name, the film opens with a man in a horse-drawn carriage approaching a gloomy castle on an oceanside cliff. This is Francis Bernard, played by John Kerr. He has come to investigate the death of his sister, Elizabeth, played by Barbara Steele, who was married to the owner of the castle, Nicholas Medina, played by Vincent Price. When he arrives at the castle, he is initially refused entrance by a servant, but Nicholas's sister Catherine, played by Luanna Anders, lets him in. Francis is at first informed that his sister died simply of a blood condition. Sensing that there's more to the story that he's not being told, Francis decides to stay around the castle for a few more days. At dinner that evening, they are joined by his sister's physician, Dr. Charles Leon, played by Anthony Carbone. Francis presses the doctor for more information and learns that his sister actually died from shock. Over time, she had become obsessed with the torture chamber in the basement of the castle, where the blood of a thousand men and women had been spilt years earlier by Nicholas's father. She spent an increasing amount of time there until one evening they heard a scream from the cellar and rushed in to find Elizabeth locked inside an Iron Maiden, traumatized. She died shortly after. Later that evening, the peacefulness of the castle was disturbed by the sound of harpsichord music. Nicholas insists that it was his wife Elizabeth playing the instrument. They find one of her rings on the keyboard of the harpsichord. A servant later hears the voice of Elizabeth whisper to her, and later still, Elizabeth's room is mysteriously ransacked and her belongings destroyed. Nicholas insists that Elizabeth is still alive, and they decide the only way to make sure is to exhume her body. Inside the vault, they find a shriveled, rotten corpse, frozen in agony. Nicholas realizes in horror that they buried his wife alive. He is almost driven mad by the thought of burying his wife alive, and is in a near catatonic state later that evening when he hears Elizabeth's voice calling to him. He follows the sound down into the basement to Elizabeth's vault, which slowly opens and the figure of Elizabeth rises from within. Nicholas runs in fear, frantic, and retreats to the torture chamber. Elizabeth finally catches up to him there and confronts him. He falls to the floor, his mind snapped from the strain. The doctor rushes in and we learn that this has all been a plot between Elizabeth and the doctor who have been carrying on an affair behind Nicholas's back. They hoped to drive him mad, but what they didn't count on was that, in his madness, he would take on the identity of his father, the executioner. He attacks the doctor and Elizabeth, knocking the doctor unconscious and locking Elizabeth inside the Iron Maiden for real this time. The doctor awakens and runs from Nicholas into the adjoining chamber and falls to his death into a deep pit. Francis follows the sound of voices down into the basement where he is also attacked by Nicholas and knocked unconscious. He is placed onto the ultimate torture device, strapped on a table with a giant swinging pendulum with a razor sharp blade descending slowly upon him. Can Francis escape the swinging death trap or is it too late and Nicholas has gone irreparably mad? AIP wanted to capitalize on the success of the previous Poe film, House of Usher, so they enlisted the same creative crew for this film, including director Roger Corman, screenwriter Richard Matheson, cinematographer Floyd Crosby, art director Dennis Howler, composer Les Baxter, and editor Anthony Karras. The end result was a film that shared many similarities with Usher, yet was an even bigger hit at the box office. Each film concerns a man traveling to a gloomy estate where he is initially denied entrance. Price is the master of the estate in each film and lives there with his sister. Each film concerns a woman being prematurely buried and someone going mad. In the first film, it is Price's sister. In this one, it is Price himself who loses his sanity, giving Vincent the opportunity to showcase his acting skills and an animated performance that covers a range of emotions. This is the only film Price appeared in with Barbara Steele, who only appears on screen briefly. 
He would go on to work with director Corman six more times during the 1960s. The Pit and the Pendulum was one of the best of the Roger Corman films and highly influential to filmmakers for years to come. Up next, Price would travel to Italy to appear in a trio of low-budget pictures. Enjoy an evening with a little light entertainment. But when your video heads get dirty, you lose your picture. Not a pretty sight. Happily, this new Polaroid video cassette will help you. It actually cleans your heads as it plays, so dirty heads needn't haunt you. New Polaroid video cassettes. Get the picture?